We're going to open the show right now with a person who I think epitomizes the new citizen politician. He is now the lieutenant governor of the great state of North Carolina. I am honored to have him as a regular guest on my radio show, America First. Mark Robinson, welcome to Greg Kelly Reports. Thank you for having, him, having me here, Dr. Gorka. It's a pleasure as always, excuse me. So, friends, if you're not familiar with this man's story, a veteran of the U.S. Army, let us play you a little clip of how this story began. In 2018, the Greensboro Council wanted to cancel a gun show. And this red is resident, Mark Robinson, who at the time didn't even own a gun, said, this is wrong. You're not allowed to do this. It's unconstitutional. And in a very brief speech that I still can't believe, to this day he tells me he didn't write down and he just did it on spec. This is what he told the council in Greensboro. It seems like every time we have one of these shootings, nobody wants to blame the Put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. You want to put it at my feet. You want to turn around and restrict my right, constitutional right that's spelled out in black and white. You want to restrict my right to buy a firearm and protect myself from some of the very people you're talking about in here tonight. It's ridiculous. If you haven't seen the whole video after the show, late at night, You've got to watch it. It's incredible. And that went viral, and now he's the lieutenant governor. Um, Mark Robinson, we'll talk about the Second Amendment uh, momentarily. But I heard through the grapevine, through my wife, who follows critical race theory at the Heritage Foundation, that you have declared war on critical race theory, and you understand its political origins. Why have you picked this fight, and why is CRT so un-American? Well, uh, you know, I would I would say that I picked this fight, but I don't know if, the, uh, this fight, if I picked this fight or if this fight picked me. Uh, this came onto our radar and came onto our table because we have been talking about indoctrination in our classroom for years. I witnessed it when my children were in high school. I witnessed it while I was a student at the university, an adult student at the university I attended. And uh, at, on the campaign trail, we heard from parents and teachers and students all across North Carolina, uh, complaint after complaint about how this stuff is being pushed on to, uh, how these ideologies are being pushed in the classroom. And then critical race theory has become the focal point of all this because it's being used not only against our students, but it's now being used against teachers. And now it's being used in some workplaces as well. Uh, it, it is absolutely insidious what's happening here. If you go and take critical race theory as it is applied now and take it to some, take it and then take some of the ideologies that were pushed by groups like the Ku Klux Klan and other hate groups, you can almost set them on top of each other and they mirror each other in the way that they divide, the way they uh, demonize people by race. Uh, we have come such a long way in this country. We, came, we have come all the way across this hard-fought this hard fought battle for racial equality to where we have seen a black man elected president, a very popular black man elected president for two terms. We, and that North Carolina, right here in North Carolina, we saw two black people running for the second highest position in the state, of course, and a black person winning. Uh, we see black people at the top, at the very top of every spectrum, from whether it be entertainment, athleticism, politics, science, education. We see people at the very top, people of color at the very top. And now, after making all those great strides, we want to introduce a program that's going to drive us backwards, It's going to drive us apart, teaching people that they're uh, somehow, uh, the thoughts in their head are automatically bad because of the color of their skin. It is absolutely ridiculous. And it's being driven by Marxists who want to tear this country apart for the purposes of tearing it down to rebuild it in their image. It's not just ridiculous, it's outrageous. You yourself as a black American have been compared to the Ku Klux Klan in recent cartoons written by Democrats. That's how desperate they are. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Robinson, oh, that feels so good to say that. Mark, Lieutenant Governor, um, give us your reaction 
as a veteran, as a true citizen politician who now has one of the most important jobs in one of the greatest states in America, when BLM says it's about social justice, your response to their cries that the system is inherently racist, white people are inherently bigots, and when they say on their webpage, one of our goals is to dismantle traditional nuclear families, what kind of social justice are they preaching, Lieutenant Governor Robinson? This has nothing to do with social justice. Social justice is simple. Social justice is concepts like you earn your keep and you keep what you earn. That's social justice. Uh, and that's not what they're talking about. They are talking about introducing socialism into this country. If Black Lives Matter really lived up to their moniker that, and say that Black Lives Matter, they would not be standing up to the headache of police brutality. They would be standing up to the cancer of gang violence and drug proliferation in black neighborhoods. This has turned into an absolute epidemic. The murdering, the killing of young black people. I, now, when I say young, I'm talking four, five, six-year-old uh, individuals being killed by gang violence. This has become an epidemic. And if these folks were really concerned with black lives, they'd be fighting the gangs, not the police, because it's the gangs that are taking the vast majority, the overwhelming yeah. majority of black lives in our cities. So what they're saying from the outset is a lie. And they've already identified themselves, which is a good thing, because conservatives like myself, we've been saying it for years, and now they're proving it. It truly is appalling. You look at the figures, 6,000 black Americans killed by their fellow black brothers every year. That's where the problem truly lies, and that's not white supremacy. We're, we're almost out of time. I didn't get to talk to you about what's happening on Capitol Hill when it comes to the ATF and Biden's nominee, but I have to, we'll get you on my show, the Gorka Reality Check on Sunday. Um, Mark, I have to ask you, you've got 30 seconds left. Back then, you weren't a gun owner. You stood up for the Second Amendment. You're now the lieutenant governor of North Carolina. Have you bought a gun since then? America needs to know. Yeah, one or two. <laughs> <laughs> one or two. I, have I love it. We, yes, we've sir. got to go to the range. We've got to go to the range next time. Absolutely. Follow this man. Support this man. He, he is making America great again in his state. He is America first. God bless you. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.